All right. Welcome to the DJRY tutorial on using Ableton Live to control your microcorg with any other controller. I believe this should work with any other controller, USB, uh, MIDI controller. I've got the MPD-218 that we're using today, and I've also got a Yamaha uh, DGX-230. It's a portable grand piano, just a commercial synthesizer, a cheap one. But it serves its purpose. So without further ado, Let's get started. Okay, so how can we do this? Everyone goes, I hear this all the time on those forums online and stuff, Facebook and whatever, the microcorg and its tiny mini keys. It's the most horrendous thing anyone ever thought to put on a synthesizer. Why, why, why? And I talked before about why I like the mini keys, but um, sometimes maybe you want to have a different control surface for the microcorg. Um, there's many different ways you can control the microcorg. Uh, right now, I've got uh, an external instrument set up here. If I click here, I've got the MIDI set to go to my microcorg, which is on the uh, UM1, the rolling UM1. And then I've got my audio coming uh, from my audio source, where the microcorg is, which is on my second input on my uh, USB dual pre uh, project series interface. My microphone's on the first channel, and then I've got my mixer with my Korg and all my other instruments on the second channel. And so... To make this work, you need to do the same thing. So you need to drop uh, an external instrument into Ableton. Then you need to uh, set it up so that it's the right uh, MIDI settings. And then uh, all you have to do is go into your preferences. Make sure that you've got, uh, here's my UM1 output and input. They're set uh, for remote. You want to make sure they're set for remote. I have everything set for remote and track, and I just kind of select things from the drop-down lists uh, for what I want. But anyways, so if once you have that done, uh, this is the drop-down list I was talking about where you can pick the control service you'd like to use, or you can just set it to receive inputs from all control surfaces. And so we're just going to leave it there on all inputs, all ins, have it set as an input, and now you can't see my microcorg. You can see my MP my MPD here. You can see my keyboard, but I can play my microcorg. That is the microcorg. I don't have it on camera. I apologize. It's over here on the other table. There's the microcorg itself, but I can play these keys over here, so you can see my hand. Pretty cool. I can even use the MPD now. So that's awesome. Now I'm controlling it. Oh, okay, so that's the end of the tutorial, right? Well, not exactly. The microcorg, sorry, the microcorg has uh, a bunch of different parameters that you can control at any time uh, using control change messages, which you can send from the encoders on here. And uh, inherently, I don't know what random messages it's saying. So I've messed around with it, and you can do some fun stuff, but it's, it's not the best. However, if you head over to the Akai website and go to the product section and then uh, to the MPD-218, you can go to the download section and download the, the editor software for the MPD-218. And the editor software... It looks something like this. So let me get my, okay, let me move this out of the way for a sec. The editor software looks something like this. So there's your MPD. And the cool thing about this is that 
we can set all of our encoders here, whichever one we want, we can just pick it, and we can set it to send any CC message we want. So right now they're sending, right, 3, 9, 12, 13. Now if you go in the manual for your microcorg at the back, or if you go online and download the manual, if you don't have your manual anymore, or you never got a manual, maybe you bought it secondhand, you can get the Korg manual for the MicroKorg online at the somewhere near the end. I think it's page, I want to say it's page 48. Don't hold me on that. There, there's my knowledge. Let me see. If I got that right, post in the comments. If, I, if I'm wrong, then, uh, you know, then ridicule me, uh, my lack of knowledge of manual pages. Anyways, it's somewhere around like the 50s. Uh, there's a chart that lists all the CC messages that the microcore uses to control various parameters for everything, the filters, the LFOs, everything else that is in there, the amplitude envelopes and all that fancy stuff. Everything can be controlled. And uh, Behringer makes a, oh, what is it called? The BC2000, BZ2000? Anyways, it's a, it's a, mic it's a controller. Similar to the MPT-218, it's got a whole bunch of encoders on it. And people actually make templates and sell the templates with the system files for that controller. And it it has all, all of the things mapped already for you. So you can find that kind of stuff already online. This is nothing that I've invented or anything by any means. This, people are doing this all over the place. However, the MPD-218 is the one that I have, so I'll show you how I use that. So basically what you can do is you can go... Uh, uh, get your manual, which I have mine somewhere, but I, I don't know where, where right now. And you can uh, figure out what messages you want to assign these parameters to, and then you can simply assign them. So let's, I think, for example, oh, let's see how my memory serves me. Um, I believe the parameters for the filter cutoff and residence are CC71 and 74. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's try it. Actually, no, I can't even try it. I do have one loaded on here. So anyways, we'll, I'll give you a quick demo. I, the reason I can't try it, I'll tell you, is because I have Ableton open. It hogs my MIDI connection from the Roland, so I can't actually transfer the stuff. I have to close Ableton to use this software. But anyways, the way you do it is you just click on a... Sorry, you... You click on one of the encoders here for the control bank, which each ABC refers to the three banks that are accessible on the device by hitting the control bank button like that and lighting these different A, B, and C lights. And those will give you different parameters you can assign for each bay. And anyways, so you just click on your encoder. You click on your what you want to send there. So you can send different things. You can send... Or you can change the sorry. You can uh, change the type, uh, right? I don't really know what these other types do. I haven't really messed around with them. I, well, after touches, yeah. Anyways, increase, decrease, one and two. I don't know. Anyways, we just need CC messages, and then you simply replace the value with the value you want. Once you've done that. You can rename this if you want to, like, Korg or something like that, so you know. You can save it in your, uh, so you can have a copy of it. Or you can, uh, where is it here? How do you do it? Oh, maybe I can't see the button because... Oh, there it is. Send to hardware. So you just click that, and then you could choose one of the 16 uh, preset banks, which are, once again, accessible by holding down the program select button and selecting one of the programs by the pads here. So on pad 9, I've already got one that I've kind of put together quickly for the microcorg, and maybe I'll make a better one, and I'll, and I'll post a link uh, in the video or something description later, but, um, yeah, so let's do this. Oh, and the other cool thing you can do here, just while I'm here, uh, is with these pads here, 
you can actually, where is it here? You can use this auto populate tool for your pads and you can actually change the scale. So you could populate, um, I'll show you that too. Uh, you can put different scales on your pads instead of having just a chromatic. Uh, you can, it gives you a few basic major minor and then the mo and then the modes, the nine, mo or the, well, how many modes are it? One, two, three, four, seven modes, seven modes. Anyways. So yeah, and then you can change different things. Uh, you can make them toggle or momentary. You can change the way the aftertouch works, etc. You can change, or you can set where the note starts on, what 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 key you want the scale to be in, and then, then you can choose to apply it to all the banks or just one or two of them. And then uh, you can change what MIDI channel they're all on, like all together. Same with the knobs, you can do this too. So if you and oh, the other thing you can do with the knobs is set different min max values. So that's something else to consider when you're making your own little program to control it. So, yeah, that's about all I need. This is not an MPD 218 software tutorial necessarily, although I'm going to tell you what you need to know to get this to work. So, I'm not going to save this because I have it already. So, going back here, I have assigned. Sorry, we lost the... On my 218, I've assigned the filter cutoffs here and the filter amplitude envelope control here. And then there's some other controls on the other. I don't know what they are, so we'll just play around and see what we can get it to do. So yeah, you can uh, really get creative and uh, not be tied just to your micro cork if you don't necessarily want to be limited by the mini keys and the five knobs. You can have as many knobs and keys as you can get your hands on. You can put them all around you on racks and tables and on the floor and your lap and you can just knob away. You can just play with your knobs. And, so, and then I said I was going to show you that scale thing. So I think I have... On program 16, you can't hear it because, let me get a different, I don't have a patch yet. Right here, let's put the initial patch. Here we go. Right? So if I go to the MPD. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh, now I'm lying. Now I'm lying to everybody. Um, oh no, it was this one. And bank C.
so yeah, you got scales on there. And I don't I won't make this any longer. Um, I think I've pretty much shown you everything I wanted to, to, to cover. So there you go. Um, get creative and uh, just try different things. Uh, I've kind of fig figured this out way late by accident. Uh, just when I first got my MPD and I accidentally, I was trying to, I had on, because the... Let me start over here. When you when you have an external instrument, you can even program MIDI notes on here. Let me just put some random notes on here. It's gonna sound like ass. And uh, oh, and then you gotta have it set like this. And you can actually program your microfork. So there's another way you can play with it, right? And you can. Whatever. Microcore program. Um, yeah, whatever. You guys mess around. Oh, yeah, I was telling you my story. Yeah, I, I, I was accidentally turning knobs, and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on when I was programming my MIDI notes, and things. it was writing these automation changes, and I was like, what the, what the wait a minute. And I put it all together, and I was like, ah, I should have known I could do that. So that's how you guys got to learn things. Everybody, if you don't know something, you just, the, you can go online, you can look up tutorials, but sometimes the coolest things you figure out on your own just by sitting in the dark, playing with yourself, t twisting your knobs, and just seeing what comes out. So keep that in mind. And uh, do, 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 have a nice day.